of this time it's going to be a controversial subject and I'm going to call it the opinionated angle. What's up guys? Tim Halstead here for episode 31. Uh, it has been named different things, building up the old 408, tearing it down. Now it's got to be testing, so i got to get testing this thing because I've been talking about it too much. But kind of give you an update of where we're at and what we're doing on this video. Um, if everything goes well, I plan on being out on Wednesday, 9-4 make a shakedown pass on it, hopefully no issues, um, got a few things to do. But at this point right now, I'm going to make a video on pinion angle. And it's my interpretation of pinion angle. It's not, you, you can call what you want, driveline angle, operating angle, whatever. I'm just trying to make it clear and concise, because if you look through the internet, there are so many different articles on how people interpret it and how people measure things. It's just too complicated. It, even, it confuses me sometimes. And I've looked at a million videos and, and the way I see that people measure things and then add the numbers together. Um, when you're adding negative numbers, their math doesn't come out right in some articles I've seen. So I'm just going to do it simple. We'll videotape it. You can be able to see the gauges of what I got and then we'll make a determination if we're going to change it. And you change that, the pinion angle, remember that's the relation to the drive shaft is how I'm looking at it with shims underneath the leaf springs and the mount. So they're angled, they come in two, four, I don't know what other degrees they come in, but I have two and four. And I did run four before, but I measured it. And I look back at my records and I want to say that when I had the four with this rear end, the new Fab 9 inch from Quick Performance, it was measuring like eight something. And that's why I went back to two. So we'll measure it and we'll get an idea and see if it's, you know, within the range of what, four to seven degrees negative. Because under load, when that thing's, when you're nailing it in the power, that pinion wants to rise up. So you want to have it be a negative, so under power, it's almost zero degrees, which is reduced load and friction. Although Tim Meyer took a Spicer driveline course, and he said at that time they were talking about the, those roller bearings actually need a degree of flexion, whether it's positive or negative, so they don't burn out. But... Another project I'm doing is I'm doing this little Ram Air setup. I made this way back in 2013, but it was pretty flexible. I've added some, just some sh straight stock to it, flat stock, to kind of make it a little bit more sturdy. And I got to replace this foam. But Rody was always big on Ram Air. And you, if you've read the articles, you know, hood scoops don't do anything unless they're at least four or six inches, I think, in the front facing aspect compared to the cowl type stuff, which I'm just not a fan of cowl induction hoods on a Ford. That's just me. So I'm gonna to try to get this to work. My car won't run without an air filter, probably from the turbulence under there. So I can put an air filter right on here because I've ran it before. Uh, we'll see what we can do with testing. But here's the gauge I'm gonna use. You know, I have a digital gauge. It's actually keeping the camera from tipping over to get the right angle, but I don't, I don't like the way it reads. It's not calibrated perfect, and I'm not going to mess with it, and I want to get this video made, so I'm using this. This is an easy thing. You can buy them right at Walmart. Just an angle gauge, angle locator, 10 bucks. But when you look at this, we're talking about the nose being pointed down, negative. Pointed up is positive, the same with the drive shaft. So looking here, I would like to have maybe two or three degrees of negative pinion, and then we'll figure out what the drive shaft is. We add them together, and that's what we got. So I'll give you an update on what we're doing, too. I, uh, let me show you this. Give a shout-out to the people that have helped me out in the past. And um, Steve Kenzel, Kenzel Ventures Limited, Steve K. Thanks for helping me out, Steve. He's a good buddy. Very big Cleveland aficionado. Um, Tim Meyer. You know, Bullet Cams, Don Rohde, Darren Morgan, um, Travis from Calverts, and uh, Patrick from Pro Systems wants me to try his carb, which I'm running now, but we're talking about doing an update. He wants me to test that and kind of give you an update that I have a set of secret A3 heads that are at Morgan's right now that we're going to put on the track boss. You know, Don was going to help me build that track boss, and I'd said this before, kind of alluded to it, but I, I talked to Kazi this week, and he's in. He wants to help me build this Track Boss 427. I'm going to call it the Roadie Special. I think we're going to make some power with that. The um, 
the intake, here's an example, you've seen this before. This is Scott Cook's intake. It's a pretty serious intake. It's bad to the bone right there. I bet you with these heads that Morgan did, I'd be picking up big time. Because I didn't see a lot of big increase with this and that Dominator. I think the Dominator kind of slowed down my 60 foot. I think the four, this isn't what I'm running now, but this old Barry Brandt 4150. I bet you that thing's going to cook on Wednesday. We'll see. Um, but yeah, Scott Cook, you're making that intake for that motor. That's cool. Can't wait to see that. Let's get going and, and measure that pinion angle. I will say this before I go doing that. <clears throat> don't overlook these U-bolts for the drive shaft. I'm telling you, you know, they got lock washers on them. And the ones I had before, you can see, you probably can't see now on the camera, but the bottom line is that these are flattened. They won't lock good. So for the cost of them, replace the washers, replace the U-bolts. If they get look suspicious or you're worried about it, it ain't worth it. They do too much of a job. So let's get measured. All right, here we are, we're underneath the car. So the best thing, like I said before, is you want the weight on the suspension, okay? Jack stands will work fine. I just don't like the way they are because they're hard to manipulate or move around under the car with jack stands. These race ramps work, they rule. Let me get it. Here's what I got for suspension. You've seen it before. I got a quick performance Fab 9 inch with the aluminum center section. I'm going to do a video on the weight difference between aluminum center sections and cast. That'll be a, a, a quick one. But I got the Mark Menser shocks on here, double adjustable, and I got the new leaf springs I got from Travis at Cal Calvert's. And right now, the, the uh, Caltrax are already adjusted with weight in it. I put my wife and my daughter in there, which is about my weight, and then I adjust them. Now, I'm just going to leave them that way because that's how you should be measuring your pinion angle with the Caltrax all set up ready to rock and roll. So hopefully you can see this video. It's kind of hard. And you got to get the right lighting so you can see. But here's the angle gauge here. So you can see if the pinion's going down, it's going backwards. So let's put it on here. <laughs> I have the yoke parallel to the ground. This might be off by a couple degrees. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. And I see to this with a hammer in honor of Blake Livingston. <laughs> but here's the gauge. So you put it on here. You want it in line with the pinion. You don't want it up here. You don't want it over here. You want it centered on the drive shaft. Now this has an area that's cut out on it. So you can see here it's, to me, that's minus five. Because if I go down with a drive shaft further, okay, see how it's going back, there's minus 10. Back up, minus five. Now should it read the same up here? In theory it should, and it does. So that's minus five, so you keep that number in your head, keep track of it. Next, we're going to pop the drive shaft out. Now, this, in this case, you don't need to pop it out and pull it all the way out of the car. Just set it down. Push it in the transmission, set it down easy on the cap, and there you go. So we'll me measure the pinion now. It's parallel with the ground. This has a nice flat surface. We can just put it on the pinion flange, and we should have, be able to have a reading. It fits pretty square. I like to put it right to the edge. And that's about, to me, that's about one degree, maybe 0.25, 1.25. It's, it's, it's not two. It might be hard for you to see it, but that's what I'm going to go with. Let's say that's 1.5. So if that's minus 5, and minus 1.5 would be 6.5. So that's within 4 to 7 or 5 to 7, not a big deal. You know, we're, we're not in here to do rocket science. We're getting a rough idea where we're at, and that's what we're going with. So, in theory, you should have the weight on the car. Have someone in the car that measures your weight. But is it going to make that much of a difference? No. So that's where we're at. That's all it is to measure an opinion angle. What I'm calling the opinionated angle. Once I'm done, which I finished up pretty much, I'm going to record it in my logbook. Remember, write that stuff down. It's important to have a record of what you're doing for changes. Shock changes. Suspension changes, weight changes. I have a whole book of nothing but weight changes, what I did removed and how much weight it took off and how much things weigh. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put the drive shaft back in, tighten U bolts. The Caltrax themselves, I probably won't even touch them. I adjusted them before, they shouldn't have changed. 
by taking the drive shaft out. So I'm probably just leave them the way they are. But like I said in previous videos, it's important to take the time to look at stuff under your car and check it over. I mean, I had my starter screw up my ring gear a couple times because I missed the fact that the starter bolt was loosening up here and there. I didn't think nothing of it and didn't put it together. But I always try to check all the bolts, look at them. I, like I said before in other videos, I put some red um, marker, like paint marker on certain bolts to make sure they're not moving on me. And it's always good to do a good once over before and after you race. Make sure you don't find anything wrong or changes on anything. But I'm ready. Let's see what this thing can do as far as hook it up now. All right, so I talked about <coughs> measuring the pinning angle and what I have here. Just to give you a little insight on how you change it, if you want to adjust it, for the rear of the car, they make these pinion shims. These are four degrees right here. I used to run these with my old center section and rear end. I got two in it now. They're like right in there, if you can see that. I'll see if I can adjust the light a little bit better. Right in here. So if you think about it, if you put a more of an angle, it's going to tilt that pinion down, and that's how you adjust it. You want to reduce it, you take them out. To adjust the drive shaft, you add shims here to the tranny mount. That'll lift that up and will change the angle. You know, that's just a stock old setup. Never had to mess with it. Drive shaft loop, which I lightened. But it's still pretty heavy duty. And then I have my subframe connectors here. And they're welded to the floor. It makes a big difference in these cars or Mustangs. So there it is, guys. The opinionated angle from Tim Halstead's perspective. You know, like I said, you go and you can do your own research and see and compare how you do things. You know, this might help you, but that's what I look at. I don't measure much more. You know, this isn't a chassis car where I got to make sure where the alignment is with a you know motor plate or the engine. It's just stock mounts um, and tranny mount. Although I got that plate back there, I'm thinking of doing that this winter, putting this, making this a motor plate car, just for the ease of in and out. And I always wanted that look because I like it. And I don't want to forget to shout out to Todd Fuchs, 351.net, for helping me out with that plate. And um, give a shout out to Dana Sniff. You know, he hooked me up with a set of intake and exhaust titanium valves. Those are going to go for the Secret A3 heads to Morgan. Man, these are nice and light. I forgot what they weigh. 82 grams maybe compared to 148 or 149 for the regular valve. But thanks, Dana, for hooking me up with that. I got the exhaust up there. I'll get those boxed up and sent to you, Morgan. We can start working on that track boss. Secret A3 heads and finish them up. The I know I'll get a lot of flack. Not flack, but I get a, I'll probably get some discussion from this video. And uh, But it makes it easy to look at stuff. That, that, I try to keep it easy and simple so we're not getting stuff complicated. You know? And I appreciate everybody tuning in. Checking out my vids. Hopefully, like I said earlier, I hope I can get the track on Wednesday, which is only a few days away. The rest of the afternoon, I'm going to check the rockers. I've never went over them and, and ran them to make sure they're okay. I'll run those. I think I'm going to pull the carb apart, clean that up. You know, Patrick from Pro Systems wants me to run a carb, test his carb, and uh, I think I might try that. I'm running his 4150 now from 2003. I think I got it. Never had a bit of a problem with it. Ran like a tramp. Um, this is old Barry Grant. I ran this thing too. and uh, But I did pick up going to the Patrick's car, but it is a little bit bigger. This is only 825, I think. But it's got the uh, interchangeable sleeves. That's kind of cool. And this is uh, this thing looks like brand new. I got it in 2003. It, came from, it ended up coming from Larry Morgan through a roundabout way. But um, great car. So let's stick to it. Let's see what we're going to do next. The video should be um, hopefully me racing and some times up there. But I do want to do a video on the rear end, you know, the weight savings going from aluminum center section from steel, fab nine inch compared to the stock housing. 
I wrote all that stuff down to be kind of a good, interesting, quick vid. See if it's worth it for you changing that in your program. I also want to give a shout out to my wife and my kids. You know, I love you guys. Thanks for putting up with dad's race car antics. And we'll keep you posted. Stay tuned. Subscribe and share.